So no matter where you are in the world, every country seems to have its peppers. And uh, France is no different. And I actually recently had a neighbor bring me some of these peppers. And so, you know, a lot of times you see these peppers and they just are beautiful and you're trying to figure out what to do with them. And today we have done a stuffed pepper and these peppers are called Piquillo de la Dosa. They are a French Spanish variety of peppers similar to the American poblano or the Mexican poblano pepper. And we have stuffed them with pork, cream cheese, and some vegetables for a wonderful keto and low carb treat. Hey guys, if this is your first time tuning in, let us know you're out there by giving us a thumbs up below and then hit that subscribe button over here in the left corner to make sure you never miss a video. Now let's start cooking. All right, let's take a look at our ingredients for these stuffed peppers. Now I know the, the recipe calls for poblano peppers, but in this case, we are using a pepper that is similar to a um, poblano pepper. And this is a French Spanish variety of pepper called Piquillo de la Dosa. And this is a Spanish pepper that's grown in France. And it's very similar to a poblano. So that's what we're gonna be using as our, as, our, as our peppers. And you can use any other type of pepper that you want, but uh, this, this is what works. And the cool thing about this is that you don't have to cook these peppers beforehand. You don't have to take the skin off because they will cook in the oven and be nice and tender and soft and everything. All right. so. Moving on, this recipe can definitely, definitely be a keto recipe. It's uh, low carb and all you need to do in this case is leave out the corn if you, if you don't want it to, to have corn in it, but you could also add other things. You could add black beans to it. You could add rice to it. Uh, there's so many different things you can do, but I'm telling you right now, the flavors in this, because we're using a nicely uh, roasted shredded pork uh, so the protein is up to you and I have I have actually slow cooked some pork and it's basically just pulled pork and uh, but it's already you know cooked and it's got a beautiful flavor but you could use some roasted chicken uh, whatever you wanted you know as your as your protein for this so looking at the rest of our ingredients we've got our our vegetables we've got basically a mirepoix and our mirepoix is a collection of vegetables that you use to flavor uh, the base of your dish. So we're using onions, red bell peppers, yellow bell peppers, green bell peppers, and then we'll add a little bit of garlic at the uh, end of sweating those vegetables. So we're gonna sweat those vegetables first. That is cook them slowly to get them nice and um, translucent and soft. And then uh, we'll add in our protein, which is our, our pork here. And then <clears throat> we will just, and then we'll add our corn in. And really all we're doing is, you know, we're cooking the vegetables, then we're putting the meat in and really just to get it warm and to meld the flavors together. And then at the very end of all of that, we will, well, we'll of course season it, but then we'll add our, add our um, cream, uh, uh, cream cheese. And the cream cheese is kind of the binding agent. And it's, of course, a wonderful flavor as well to this whole thing. And then we will uh, stuff our peppers with, with uh, our filling. And then we'll top everything with some, and I've got uh, two types of cheese here. I've got a, a, gr a grated uh, cheddar cheese and a mimolette cheese. And mimolette is a French uh, cheese that's similar to cheddar but uh, has a little bit different flavor, maybe a little bit stronger flavor than a cheddar does. And then we'll just finish our dish with some nice chopped tomatoes and a little bit of cilantro. And we'll, we'll put some of the cilantro in the mix as well at the end of cooking it. So those are our ingredients. Let's get started. To get started, we have got just a little bit of oil and I, I think I've used some grapeseed oil. You could use olive oil or something actually <clears throat> with not that much flavor, uh, a, a mild flavored oil, grapeseed oil, avocado oil, whatever you, you'd like. 
but we've got a little bit of that in our pan here and just to, just to get the bottom of it covered and we'll toss in our onions and our peppers and we're just going to cook those all very slowly over a medium medium heat just until they're nice and soft and translucent or at least the onions will be translucent let's just get them stirred around a little bit and as always I like to add a little bit of salt when I'm sweating vegetables just to get the moisture start start to uh, release and also it's a little pre-seasoning as well so we'll let those get going and start sweating again don't you don't want to rush this step you just want to cook it nice and slowly while those uh, all those vegetables cook so just to give you an idea of how to break these peppers down in case you're wondering about that what I what I've done is just, I've just cut them lengthwise and you know when you open a pepper there's going to be some seeds in there and there's going to be a little membrane along the edge and so what I do is I'll just take a paring knife to get a part of that get underneath that membrane and just kind of pull it out that way and once you get that part done you can now also take a spoon and just slide that lengthwise down the pepper and that helps to get everything out and it'll also help to get the get the seeds out as well so that's the way to prepare those peppers and now they are ready for stuffing our onions and peppers have been cooking here for probably about four minutes and they're getting nice and soft which is where we want them I'm not really trying to caramelize these I mean you could it wouldn't hurt anything to caramelize them but um, that's not really the goal at this point so now I think I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and put our garlic in and in this case I'm just going to squeeze it with a little garlic press and we'll get that mixed in and of course the reason we saved the garlic until this point was that is because garlic burns quite easily and so we, we wanted to make sure that we put it in late enough before we start adding the other ingredients so that the garlic doesn't doesn't cook and, and start to burn so oh man and what an aroma we are getting fantastic okay so now basically we we are, we've really gotten about as far as we need to go with the with the vegetables you could have again like i said you can go a little bit farther if you want but they're going to continue to cook so now let's go ahead and add our our shredded meat and i've already pulled some of this but i'm just going to make sure it's nice and shredded and i'll just do this by hand putting our meat in there <clears throat> because we, we don't want any large lumps when we get ready to stuff our peppers so you know if you started shredding your your pork and you didn't get it all done this this is a good time to to finish it up and you know we've still got a little bit of the the oil from the from the pork or the fat from the pork which is also going to serve to to flavor this dish it's just going to be a really really nice taste okay all right so there's our pork Now all we need to do is just kind of get our pork mixed in really well with our with our veg, and uh, you can you can imagine how good it tastes already. Just some nice onions and peppers and garlic with some nice pulled pork. It's kind of hard to go wrong there. So we'll let that cook for a little bit. We do want to go ahead and bring this up to a pretty high temperature. And let that let that pork start to cook or start to maybe even caramelize a little bit hey everybody it's Walter from artistic gourmet adventures 
My wife Kim and I own this unique small group tour company where we host groups of 6 to 12 guests for one week luxury adventures in beautiful locations throughout Europe and the United States. I have the privilege of being the adventure chef, creating and preparing daily gourmet meals for our guests. So in this video series from our cozy home kitchen here in the beautiful Loire Valley of France, we will demonstrate a wide variety of recipes from culinary classics to originals, as well as covering professional kitchen techniques for the home chef. For more information on Artistic Gourmet Adventures, check our website, linked in the description below. Once our pork is nice and warmed through very well, let's go ahead and add our corn. And again, you know, you don't necessarily have to add all of the, the corn. I think that's probably enough corn. Personally, I could, I'd be fine if it was all corn, but you know, keeping a balance, that's a nice amount of corn. And again, we could certainly add some green peas to that, or uh, you could even add some green beans if you wanted. It's really up to you at this point, but we got that nice and nice and heated through. And now I'm just going to go ahead and season it a little bit. And again, the pork has been cooked, and so it's already has it already has some seasoning. But I'm just going to add a little bit more of my seasoning mix, which again the ingredients are down in the in the comment section. But in this seasoning mix, I've got some cumin, ground cumin some uh, chili powder, and some smoked paprika, just to kind of give it more of a, a Mexican flavor. And uh, at this point, it's a good idea to go ahead and taste it and see where we are. Mmm, mmm. Really nice, really nice mix. I'm actually going to add a little bit more seasoning to mine because my wife loves spice. Not. not. So, but it's still, it's not going to be that spicy, especially once we add the, add the cream cheese to it. It's going to be fine. So at this point, everything is nice and heated and warmed through. I'm actually going to go ahead and turn off the heat and now We'll just mix in our, uh, our cream cheese. And again, I think I've, or we've, we've listed the quantity down in the uh, com comment section of the, of the video. So you'll be able to see how much you put in there. And you know, you could put, you could put more or less if you decide you wanted a little bit more of that, but you can see the consistency that we're getting now. And this is what we want. We want it to, uh, you know, to come together. And again, our heat is off on the, uh, under the pan. All right. That is it for cooking the mixture. Now it's simply a matter of stuffing our peppers. And just to give you an idea of, to me, the easiest way to do it is just to go right like this on each pepper. There we go. Just like that. And we'll just continue with all the peppers until we get them all stuffed. Okay, we have all of our peppers stuffed. And just a reminder, I did just put a little bit of oil in the bottom of this pan before I uh, put my peppers in there. So just make sure that you do that. Of course, this is a non-stick pan and it wouldn't, probably wouldn't matter that much anyhow, but it just helps to have a little bit of oil so we don't, so nothing sticks. And I've just lined this with a, I put this in another pan because I'm gonna start sprinkling this cheese over it and I just don't wanna get cheese all over the stove. And um, something else about this filling is that if you end up with extra filling, you can certainly put this over a salad it would be nice if you let it go chill a little bit and you can just put it over your salad. It would make a fantastic topping for, for salad. So now we will just top these with our cheese. And hopefully I mentioned this, but we have preheated our oven to 190 degrees Fahrenheit or 375 or 190 degrees centigrade 
or 375 Fahrenheit. So make sure you do that before you get started putting everything together so the oven is up to speed. Once we've got our cheese on the uh, peppers, our last step is just going to be to cover them with some aluminum foil. So we'll, we'll, we'll do that and leave them in, like I said, for 20, 25 minutes. And then we'll check them, make sure everything is melted. And then we'll take them out and remove the foil so that that cheese can then firm up on top. Okay. Wow. I can hear it. I can smell it and it smells incredible. Let's just take a look. Oh yes, look at that. Now, I realized after I put these in that I actually forgot to put my cilantro on. So we're just gonna put a little bit over the top here while we, we're gonna put these back in the oven and just let them get a little bit crustier on top. As a matter of fact, you could even turn your, your broiler on if you wanted to do that, if you wanted to really kind of crust that cheese up and, and brown it a little bit. But these things are ready. We could eat them right now, but we just want to get a little bit of crunch on that, on that cheese. So we're going to put them back in for about five minutes. I went ahead and turned the broiler on, or the underside grill as they would call in, in Europe, and I put the, uh, the peppers back in and it's been about five minutes. So let's check them. And wow, that is what we're going for. Look at the color, beautiful. That's exactly what we're going for. Okay, let's give it, get them plated up and give it a taste. It is that time to give this a taste. And what we've done today with these peppers is we have, uh, made a couple of sides and you know, it's basically the, the dish is, a, is very low carb, it can even be keto. I've paired it with a little bit of rice, which you wouldn't have to do. You could do some, just some steamed vegetables. And then I've got some buttered uh, green beans here and then just finished it with some tomatoes. And by the way, when you are using fresh tomatoes and just dice them up and put them on uh, something as a, as a garnish, it's really nice if you just put a little bit of really good olive oil and a little bit of balsamic vinegar with some salt and pepper. And you talk about brings out some incredible flavor. So that's just a little tip on, on tomatoes. But let's give these peppers a try. Mmm. Mmm. That is just great. It's just some great flavor. The peppers, of course, are not hot, but they have a nice little tang to them. And you can tell that they're just beautifully fresh uh, peppers and um, they just go so well with the pork, a little, a little bit of spiciness of the pork. And then finishing with the tomatoes, what a great dish. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more, give us a thumbs up below and hit that subscribe button, it's free. And ring the bell if you want to be notified as soon as we release a new video. Also, let us know in the comments if you have any special recipe requests. We really appreciate you tuning in. See you next time.